This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to create this vector tire icon using Inkscape. And at any, any point in this tutorial, you could look down at the bottom left-hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So we'll close out of this and we'll get started. The first thing to do in Inkscape is go to View and set that to Custom, and then we will zoom in at 100%. And if you want to know how to make Inkscape appear dark on your computer like it does on mine, I have a link to that in the description. So go ahead and check that out if you feel inclined. So once we've done that, we'll open up our line of distribute menu with this button right here. We're going to want to make sure that we have this drop down selected at last selected. We want to have that option chosen. And then we'll open up our edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button right up there. So the first thing we're, do, we're going to do in Inkscape is create an oval. So come over to the, uh, the Circle and the Ellipses tool. <clears throat> and let's just click and drag on the canvas to create um, an oval about that size and width right there. And I'm going to go to the Select tool just to measure this. This is about 127 by 246. It doesn't have to be exactly that size, but just to give you an idea of what proportion this should be at as far as uh, width compared to height goes. So once we've done that, I'm just going to bring the opacity of that down about in half. And then I'm going to convert this to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. And then what I'm going to do is go to Path and Linked Offset in order to create another, uh, a larger copy of it. We just click Linked Offset. <clears throat> and we're going to turn that offset copy red. And then we'll grab this node up here and just pull this out a fair amount, maybe about... Um, maybe about that much. And once you've pulled it out about that much, let's finalize that by going to Path, Object to Path. And then we can go back to our Select tool, and we'll right click on this, on this red oval, and go to Duplicate. And we're going to turn that duplicated copy green. And then hold Control on the keyboard and just click and drag this over to the left about, maybe about that far. And once we've done that, uh, we can click off of that to deselect it. And then we'll go to our Bezier pen, and we'll turn on our Snap to Paths up here. Make sure you have this, the Snap nodes or handles turned on, and then we'll turn on our Snap to Paths. And we're going to connect the cursor. We're going to snap the cursor to the top of this green oval right here. And once it snaps onto the top of it, just click, and then hold Control and bring that line straight, straight across until it snaps to the top of this red oval, and then click. And while still holding Control, bring this straight down until it snaps to the bottom of the red oval, and click. And then still holding control over to the left until it snaps and click. And we can let go of control and just bring this line back to the starting point. Then we'll go to our select tool and click on that. Uh, we could turn off our snap to paths. We're done with that. And hold shift and click on the green oval and go to path union. So we end up with that right there. And what we're going to do now is let's click on this red oval and let's right click that and go to duplicate. And we'll hold shift, click on the green shape, and go to Path, Difference. And what we want to do now is we want to take that green shape and right click that and go to Duplicate. And we'll turn that red. And then we'll right click it and duplicate it again and turn that blue. And then hold Control on the keyboard and just click and drag this blue copy over to the right until you see about that much of the red portion. We want to be able to see about that much. And once you've done that, just hold shift and go ahead and click on that red portion so we have the blue and the red selected and go to Path, Difference. And then we're going to right click that, go to Duplicate, hold Control, and click and drag this over to the right a little bit, maybe about that much. That much I'd say, that's pretty good. And we could hold shift and click on the other red shape so we have them both selected and go to Path, Union. And then we could hold shift and click on the green shape and we will center that on the vertical axis like that. So we have the starting of the pattern of the uh, of, of the treads of the tire. And then we can click off of the graphic to, to deselect everything. So the next thing we want, we want to do is let's click on this green shape and we're going to duplicate this again. We're going to right click it and go to duplicate and we'll turn that um, we'll turn that red and then we'll right click that red copy, go to duplicate, turn that blue, and then hold control and click and drag this over to the right again. We're going to make this one a little thicker, maybe about that much. And then we could hold shift, click on the red copy, 
path difference. And then we're just going to right click that copy, go to duplicate, hold shift, click on the green shape, and then align the right sides like that. So we end up with this right here. So uh, once we've done that, we can just go ahead and click off of the graphic to deselect everything. What we're going to do now is put some patterns in these two red shapes right here. I'm going to put some tread patterns in them. And to do that, I'm just going to come to the Create Rectangles and Squares tool. And I'm just going to click and drag and create a rectangle about that thick going over the center of the entire graphic. Maybe about that much. And once you've done that, let's convert that to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. And then we'll go to our Select tool, hold Shift on the keyboard and click on the red shape. And let's make sure that's centered relative to the horizontal axis. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So what we want to do now is let's take this red rectangle right here, I mean that blue rectangle, and right click that and go to Duplicate. And let's, let's hold Control, actually let's hold Shift and click on this red shape and align the top edges with this button right here to put that at the top of the graphic. And then we can click off of it to deselect everything. And we're going to click on just this blue graphic right here. And we're going to take this bottom arrow and just bring that up a little bit. Maybe about that much. You want it to be significantly thinner than the other rectangle. And I'd say about that thickness is pretty good. You can see here it's about 6 pixels high. And this one is 20 pixels high. So once you've done that, let's hold Shift and click on the other blue uh, shapes so we have them both selected. And let's go to Extension, Generate from Path, and we're going to choose Interpolate. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set the exponent, uh, exponent to 0, interpolation steps to 6, interpolation method to 1, duplicate end paths. Um, we're going to leave that on. And then we're going to go ahead and click Live Preview just to see what that looks like. And I'd say, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. That's what we're going for. And once you've done that, go ahead and click Apply, which will create it. And then we can close out of this. So we have this copy we just created, so we don't need the two original ones. So in order to get rid of those, I'm just going to click and drag through the center of this graphic right here, and it's going to grab that blue one that we originally created. And I'll press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And then I'll just click and drag over the top of the graphic here to grab that other blue one we created. Press delete to get rid of that. And then we can click on this right here, and we're going to ungroup that with this button right here. Ungroup selected objects. And then we're going to unify them together. We'll go to Path, Union. And then we'll right click this, go to Duplicate, and we will flip that vertically with this button right here. Flip selected objects vertically, and then hold Shift on your keyboard and click on this red shape right there. And let's align the bottom edges. And now we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So let's click on this blue set of blue objects and then hold Shift and click on the other set of blue objects so we have them both selected and go to Path, Union. And then we'll right click these objects, we'll go to Duplicate, hold Control, click and drag these off to the right for now. And let's click on this, uh, this blue segment right here. And I'm actually going to zoom in to, to do what I'm going to do next. You could zoom in by pressing plus and minus on your keyboard. And I'm just going to pan the page around by pressing down on the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. We want to click on this blue object right here and then hold Shift and click on this red object right there. And once you have those both selected, we'll go to Path, Intersection. And we can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to see what happened. It created that right there. And we're going to do the same thing with this set on this shape right here. So let's grab this, this other set, this duplicated copy. We'll hold Control. We'll click and drag that over to the left. And again, I'm going to zoom in so I could grab that. I'm just going to press plus on the keyboard to zoom in. And I'm going to hold Shift and click on that red shape so we have them both selected. And go to Path intersection and then press one on the keyboard to zoom back out so now what we could do is let's click off of the graphic to deselect everything and let's click on this uh, black oval here in the center and we'll right click that and go to duplicate and we're going to turn that green and then we'll hold control and shift on the keyboard and just scale this in a little bit just to give a little bit of padding around the black uh, oval as well so we just want to leave a little bit of padding in there and then once we've done that, we'll right click this and go to duplicate. And we'll turn that red and just hold control and click and drag this off to the left. Maybe about that far. And then we can hold shift, click on the green shape and go to path, difference. So what we're going to do now is 
let's select this green object right here. Be careful that you don't have the red object selected. You can tell in the bottom left hand side of the screen that it'll show you this little stripe here. If you see the color red, that means you selected the tread pattern, which we don't want to select. We want to select the green part. And you'll see the green stripe there. That means we have the green part selected. And then we can hold shift with that selected and click on this big red oval to the right. And we're going to unify them together by going to path, union. And let's, um, let's turn that green just so we can see it. And once we've done that, with that selected, we're going to go to path, linked offset. And we're just going to grab this little node up here and bring this out a little bit just to give just to put a little padding around the entire graphic. You don't want those treads running to the very edge of the graphic there. It won't look right. So I like to put a little bit of padding out here, maybe about this far. And once you've done that, we can go to Path, Object to Path to finalize it. And we go back to our Select tool. And let's turn that black. I'm actually going to turn this off black, 90% gray. And I'm going to bring the opacity of that all the way up. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to click on this green shape right here. And I'm going to press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And then I'll click on this green shape, hold shift, click on that black oval in the center. We'll go to path, difference. And I'm just going to hold control. I'm just going to move this over to the right a little bit just to keep it consistent with, its, with the perspective that we're seeing the tire at. And once we've done that, we could hold shift click on the large black shape there and go to path difference and what we're going to do now is we're going to take each of these red objects and unify them together so let's click on this first tread pattern right here and then hold shift let's click on these two stripes still holding shift let's click on the tread pattern to the left and unify them all together by going to path union and then hold shift and click on the black shape and go to path difference and now what we can do is we can turn the opacity of this all the way up and let me flip this horizontally. Flip selected objects horizontally so it's facing the right. I'm just going to move this off to the side now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some, like, um, some motion lines at the bottom of this tire like you saw in the thumbnail here. I'm going to put those little motion lines right there. And uh, to do that, I'm just going to create a rectangle. Hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and just click and drag to create a perfectly symmetrical square. We'll go to path, object to path, and I'll turn that red and bring the opacity down about in half. And I'm gonna go back to the select tool, and then I'm gonna click on this to get the rotation handles, and then hold control and grab one of these corner handles and just rotate this around while holding control until the corners are going perfectly up and down like that. And then we could right click this, go to duplicate, we could turn that blue, we could hold control, and grab one of these corner arrows and rotate it around until this one's sitting upright like that. And then we can click this again to get back to our scaling handles and hold control and click and drag on this top arrow right here and just scale that up until the width of the blue box, ex blue box exceeds the width of the red box. <laughs> just like that right there. So once we've done that, we'll hold control and bring this box up to just beneath where the corners of that red box are and hold shift and click on the red box and go to path difference. And we'll click on this graphic to get back to our rotation handles and I'll hold control and I'll just grab one of these corners and just rotate this around until it's sitting at what appears to be like a 90 degree angle. You got this side going up, this side going left, and this side going diagonal, just like that. And I'm going to hold shift and click on our little tire graphic and I'm going to align the bottom edges, align bottom edges with that button right there. And then let's Hold shift and click on the tire to deselect it so we just have this selected. And then I'm going to hold control and I'm just going to bring this all the way over to the right where the tire is so it connects in there. And I'm going to press plus on the keyboard to zoom in and show you. We want this connecting. We don't want this out here where it's going to, uh, where this was space between that and the tire. We want to bring this thing all the way in so it connects to the bottom of the tire like that. And then we just press 1 to zoom back out to 100%. And what I'm going to do now is we'll go to the Edit Pads by Nodes tool. I'm going to grab this top node. I'm going to hold Control and grab this top node and bring this down to about here. And then while still holding Control, I'm just going to grab this left node over here. I'm going to pull this out a little more. Then we go back to our Select tool. I'm going to right-click this and go to Duplicate. Hold Control, bring this up to about here. 
right click, duplicate, hold control, bring this up to about there, maybe about that far, and right click and we'll duplicate that one more time, hold control and bring that up to about there. And once we've done that, let's click and drag over all four of those red shapes. And let's make sure they're spaced out evenly by going to the distribute panel down here and selecting make vertical gaps between objects equal. Go ahead and click that. And there, there you have it. They're all evenly spaced apart. And then we can go to path union. So what we're going to do now is let's zoom back into this. I'm going to press plus on the keyboard to zoom back in. We're going to get rid of a part of this shape. We're going to get rid of the part of this shape that goes over the white parts of that graphic. So in order to do that, I'm going to grab the Bezier pen. And I'm going to start out here. And I'm just going to draw a line going through this red box like that. And right around out to the edge. We want to get rid of the part of the red shape that crosses over the white shape, the white parts of this tire. And that, this is what we're doing right now. So once you've drawn that shape, we'll go back to our select tool hold shift in the keyboard and click on the red shape and go to path the difference and then you can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out we could hold shift click on our tire graphic and go to path union and one last step that we can do is let's click on this again to get our rotation handles and instead of rotating it we're going to grab one of these side arrows and we're just going to bring that up a little bit maybe bring that up about that much and we'll take this top one, slide that over to the right, just to give it a little bit of a, give it a little bit of character, make it look like it's in motion. And that's pretty much it. So that's how you can create a vector tire icon using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.